Hey guys, welcome to uh, another Motif uh, video. Uh, one of our viewers, uh, Mini Muse, uh, actually requested a setup video about three months ago, <laughs> and we only really just kind of got round to it because we're at a point now where we're, we're only a couple of items away from being completely decked out completely. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to have the items here on the table in front of us. We'll do it one by one, and we'll go through all the equipment that we use on all of our shoots, and we'll explain what we use it for, why we bought it, what's good about it, what's bad about it, how it's limited. And also we'll go into just sort of a bit more detail and you'll be cutting in between us talking and sort of close-ups of the actual item itself. So you have a nice understanding of what we use and what we still need. Now everything we talk about in the video, uh, all the products and the items, will, uh, will be listed below. If we can't find a link for them, their name will just be there. And uh, as always, our DMs will be open. So if you need anything, drop us a DM, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever else is out at the moment. Let us know in, uh, as well. And also, just drop a comment if you have a question and we answer our comments anyway. Um, so, enjoy the video, guys. So the camera that you're watching this on right now is the camera that we record all of our cinematic shoots on and pretty much every shoot that we do on. And that is the Sony A7S, the first edition. Um, the thing about the first edition is it's a very, very good in low light. It has very good low light sensitivity. So it's a mirrorless camera, it's a full frame sensor, and what it does is it allows us to shoot but run and gun, it's very small, very light, very nimble. It allows us to shoot when we're on the move um, in low light situations. So when it gets dark outside or it, start, or, you know, it starts to get dusk, which it does in the UK quite often, especially in the winter months, it allows us to really capitalise on, on sort of where we live. So it's a perfect camera for us. That also that is completely waterproof and, uh, and, it, and it has many features that we can put to good use. It can actually shoot in 4K, but only on the A7S1, only to an external recorder. On the A7S2, which is what we'd like to get at some point, you can actually record straight onto the camera's body. This entire video is shot on a 35mm lens, um, really crystal clear. You can see the kind of depth of field behind me is all blurry, uh, and I'm, you know, in focus, looking, looking real nice. Now the the good thing about the 35mm lens is that it gives you, it's, it's one of the most standard lenses used in, in, uh, in photography, uh, in concert photography, just because it gives you a, a nice wide, wide kind of lens, but not too wide that you end up losing focus and it, it makes everything look like fish-eyed as well. Um, so the, the, the good thing about the lens that we're using at the moment is that it's an E-mount and Sony, Sony only allows for E-mounts. Um, so that means for these lenses we have to get a, a, a adapter, um, which is a Canon EF adapter, which allows us to use these three lenses um, on the camera. Now that poses issues because a lot of the, um, a lot of the items that we use with the camera, i.e. The, the gimbal, the stabiliser, etc., um, the 4K monitor, all that kind of stuff, it doesn't this is an extra weight so that not just this but this as well can it can be quite heavy um, and it does make the camera feel real bulky and kind of is a little bit to kind of take around so the camera right now is looking real sleek real nice with these on it kind of just protrudes out a little bit too much it looks like a you know, it just it just doesn't look right it doesn't feel right as well uh, and also we've had issues with this because it's where it's obviously quite heavy and the camera's not used to it it kind of disrupts it and it kind of it adds a a, a circle effect where it's it's not seated correctly. Anyway, so these these lenses, this this is the adapter that allows us to join the E mounts and the EF mounts. Um, our first lens that uh, the, that we got with the camera um, is a, a Canon 50 millimeter, really good, insanely good lens. However, it is a little bit too close. 50 mi uh, 50 millimeters is kind of an old, uh, kind of a weird weird number because you're either close up, you either want to go for like a 35 to kind of 40 millimeter. Or, or, or you want to go real far away and get like a 70 to you know 80, 90, 100 millimeter, um, which this comes into perfect, uh, perfect use. This is a Canon uh, 18 to 135 millimeter. Um, this is one we got recently. is it, it is incredible. It it gives you a nice kind of range. Uh, it gives you a nice, uh, a nice sort of uh, far. You, you you can stand quite far back and get a lot in. Um, so that's the uh, EF, the, that's the EF Canon mount, the 18 to 135, and then our last lens, which, which we got first, um, is the uh, is the Canon uh, 10 to 22 uh, millimeter lens. Um, again, have to use the adapter. This is a great lens because it can go down to 10 millimeters, which gives you a really nice um, kind of uh, fisheye look, which is what you'll see in a lot of GoPros. 
Um, however, you can go up to 22, so it's nice that that's quite a good one if you if if you need to get quick shots, you can go for the 22, but then you can also go go down to 10 if you need to get a lot in as well. Um, so there, the lenses we uh, we're currently using. As far as lenses go, um, our main goal was to always get a 35 mm and that was the, this was the last lens that we got. Um, but these were kind of building up to it. So we're now we although you see people with 20 lenses right now, we, we've got a nice limit, and there's not many more that we need. Um, obviously, it'd be great to have all Sony lenses, so we didn't have to have this um, adapter. Um, but unfortunately, that's how the cookie crumbles. But we have this 35 mm which has been an absolute treat for us. So this is the Zion Tech Crane V2 gimbal. Um, it is essentially a very, very good stabilisation. Think of it like a, a chicken's head where you can move the body and the, the head sort of stays in the same place. It is, it's a very nice sleep design with padding on both the inner side and the, and the top um, to keep everything in place and to soften any impact. Quite a durable case. A bottom tube which can actually be screwed into a tripod, but it can screw basically into the majority of tripod mounts, um, especially for DSLRs, which is what this gimbal was made for. You can also use your phone on it. Um, and then you get the main body of the gimbal. So these are the batteries that come with it. In the V2, you get two very large batteries that have quite a long um, battery life. You mount the camera to this point here of the gimbal, and then what it does is it stabilizes movement. And now normally there'll be a camera up here and it'd be straight. Obviously we haven't balanced this. It doesn't work very well without the camera on because there's no balance. But that's essentially how it works. So in shots such as this one that you're seeing now on the screen, which is from our Logic video, and pretty much most of our shoots have used this gimbal at some point, it allows for nice, fluid, smooth movement shots, especially low, low to the ground, because you can actually hold it like such, which the camera's mounted here. So you can basically run along with it next to your leg and have it nice, stable, smooth moving shots. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the drone we have. Um, before I explain this, uh, before the Mavi Pro, we, uh, we had a Phantom, uh, a Phantom Standard Edition, Phantom 3. Good, it was a bit big, bulky, you couldn't shut it down like you can this. Um, so it was incredibly, uh, incredibly annoying to carry around. The Mavi Pro itself is perfect. Um, it folds down to that kind of size. Um, so really, really easy to carry around. Um, you can buy the Mavi Pro uh, on its own, uh, which is uh, £980, I believe. Um, however, this is the Flymore edition. Um, so we knew we were going to be using it for a, for a lot of different stuff and using it regularly, that we thought one battery is not going to last us because the battery lasts about 27 to 28 minutes. Um, and bear in mind, that's on the low. That's, that's low as it can go. So that's not using all of the features. Uh, that's not keeping it up and flying it. The further you fly it away, the more battery it uses. So this is perfect. We got uh, an extra two batteries. We got an, uh, an extra couple of uh, extra couple of rotors, and we got uh, a very nice kind of carry bag as well. Um, so that was uh, thirteen ninety nine. Um, so it was an extra four hundred quid for extra three hundred quid for two uh, two batteries, rotors, and a uh, and a little bag that obviously you can tell by the size of it is not big. Really easy to carry around. You can you, you can even put it in your rucksack. Um, and it still keeps it all safe as well. With that being said, um, this is the, the uh, controller here. Now we've got this on here, this little uh, red strip, so you can't move the, uh, you know, you can't interfere with it or, 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 or uh, damage it at all. Um, and then what happens is you open it up like this, and then you put your phone into this section just here, uh, and then you basically get uh, live uh, footage from the lens uh, onto, this, uh, onto this controller. But um, the drone, it does look good. All of the footage that we have that we have used it on, you can tell the difference. Uh, a, a good example, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen now. Um, you can tell, you can see by this logic video that the camera looks a little bit, a little bit off. You can tell it's not exactly HD. Um, but then you've also got the, uh, you've also got this uh, uh, this shot here, which is uh, which is from the Mavisif show that we did. You can see that the, the it looks a lot better. You can see the colours pop a bit more, and you can kind of see a lot more detail as well. This is the Lilliput 4K camera assist monitor. We bought one of these because we were having issues on set, especially in sunny days in the summer, seeing what was coming, what what our our, cat, our frame and our body and our uh, lenses were producing on the small monitor on the A7S. Um, so that attached with sort of the brightness limits on the A7S's monitor, we couldn't always see what we were framing up, we couldn't see the focus, 
it caused problems. Also, for running gun, it caused problems. So what did we get? We got this Lilliput 4K assist uh, monitor, a 4K output monitor, which allows us to have basically a bigger screen. It allows us to frame things easier. We can see what everything we're doing a hell of a lot easier. We have a lot more control over the brightness, contrast, and everything like that, which obviously when you're filming in uh, a flat profile, a flat color profile, which we do for all of our shoots, so we have the full dynamic range of the um, of the edit afterwards for the colors. Um, you want to leave these quite balanced, quite neutral, the, uh, the the contrast and whatnot. But it does allow for you to turn the brightness of the screen up a lot more than the A7S's standard uh, monitor does, so that we can really keep on top of our shots. So for the camera, we use a Sony XLR K1M, and it's a great sound system for the for the Sony camera. The audio on uh, on board is not very good, so you have to get an external um, as well. There, obviously, I can't show you it because we're recording through it now. So the sounds good. We've used it for all of our uh, all of our films um, and all of our videos. However, we 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 do do a lot of ADR, um, but this captures a lot of the raw audio that we do eventually use. Um, it's good to be able to tell the difference, even if we were at ADR at the end of the day. This still allows us to hear exactly what we were saying, whereas the onboard audio, you can't quite make out what people are saying because it's very, very limited. But this is a great sound. It's, uh, it goes for uh, £299, so it's relatively expensive uh, for, for sound when you look at you know some mics at like 100 quid. But this is perfect. You can It fits on top of your camera, comes in a, a nice case that keeps it all, all safe and secure. This is one of my favourite bits of equipment we've ever bought, sheerly because it is one of the most diverse and most important things you can have with you on any video you're making, on any shoot you're doing, and it is always, always, always used. Um, it's something that is so important, especially if you're doing any VFX in any video, because this is like the bread and butter. And it's a very simple piece, it's a pop-up green screen. Sounds ridiculous. You, if, you're, if you're a video maker, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you've probably got a much better one, a bigger one than this. But for us, it is really important. Completely portable. Quite small when it's folded, but when it isn't... Now this can fit most people on it that are my height, which is somewhat average height or short, um, but for some people that are taller you can't always fit them on, so you have to make uh, accommodations to take step, stand closer, stand further back, frame it in a certain way, or indeed um, just, just have them crouch down. So as you can see in this shot here from our sound video, our friend Tom is in the driver's seat, clanging character Sam, um, and he's driving a vehicle. In the background you can see out the rear view window that the, um, the Matt and myself are chasing him down in our, in our weeks, shooting at him, um, but what you can't see through the camera trickery and through not really noticing it. If you look closely to the sides here, you'll see that the actual the sides of the cars are not moving. That's because we didn't have the green screen on those sections, although we could have just cut them out. Um, and what this is, basically what's actually happening in this scene off the camera, which I wish we had a bit of behind the scenes of, is Tom is sitting in the driver's seat, Matt is standing behind the car with the green screen at the rear view window like this, and then I was at the front on the bonnet, jumping up and down, shaking the car. So the, so the car shaking, Tom shaking, it looks all legitimate like he's going over a bumpy road, The back with the, and, and in the backdrop you see two cars moving, which we just filmed from outside of the car with the camera um, alongside it. Now, so what I'm gonna do now is play all the graphics uh, over whilst I'm talking, so you can see uh, all of our graphics. Now we got all of our graphics from Fiverr. Um, our logo was actually designed by my sister, uh, incredibly talented uh, graphic designer, Worked for He and Kerrang, two very high public, uh, two very high publications, and also worked for Studio Canal, which completely came out of left field. Um, really talented. Um, she made the logo for us. We, we we said to her, we don't know what we want. We're not entirely sure. Um, we want something with M and S, but we're not entirely sure how to link them together. Uh, gave Sophie three four days, and she fired back with this logo, and we were like, that is the logo we want. That's the logo that we really really want. So we took that logo um, and then we did change it. So we, get, so we, we went to Fiverr um, and, we, and we, we, picked out a lo we picked out an intro that we liked. It was a neon intro, we, we, we love Synthwave, we're a big fan of the 80s, kind of the entire genre. Um, and we said, 
We want something a little bit outrun, a little bit kind of, um, you know, neon retro. So we gave our logo to this uh, gentleman and he made the logo like this. So you can see the kind of neon vibe. Obviously the logos, the logo glows, obviously you can't do that on a hoodie, but you've got the nice neon logo. So this is the original logo we had that my sister originated, uh, that my sister created originally. But this is the, the change one that we have. So that's the main logo. We've then also got um, the Beer with Mavie Smith. So we do a series called Beer, Beer with Mavie Smith. This logo, now we wanted to kind of have a beer style, um, but we couldn't quite find one to fit because it's quite a unique thing. Um, we, we found ton, tons of beer logos. We found tons of, uh, you know, uh, create your own brand, but we wanted a, an actual intro to something. Uh, and then we fell up. We fell across this this Fiverr, this 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 guy on Fiverr who created this incredible advert, which we took, um, put over the song that my dad introduced. An incredibly talented family. Um, not to brag. Uh, we 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 took the music that my dad made, put it over the over the beer beer with Mavis logo, um, and then created. Um, we uh, we actually poured beer into a glass, recorded it with this sound and overlaid it onto the sound to give it that bubbly effect. Um, it looks really good. We personally think it, it looks it looks in, uh, incredible. We were really shocked by how, how good it turned out to be. So that's the beer with Mavis Smith one. We've then got the Mavis Smith Hangout. So the Hangout is a talk show that we do, a little kind of like, you, we kind of come together as a community and kind of talk about random things that we're doing, you're doing, and kind of enjoy that. We wanted a homey effect, so we wanted to feel like when you step into uh, when you step into that in, into the hangout, it's coming in from the cold, from the rain, and kind of warming up, and you know, kind of getting all comfortable and like atmospheric. I guess is the, the, the perfect word for it. Now, with that being said, you can tell by the intro that it's got that flickering of the neon, the rain, like the pattering on the window, that zooms in, and then the hangout with the little podcast mic. Um, Incredible logo, we feel as well. Again, really knocked it out of the park, um, and it, it kind of it, it, it achieved what uh, what we wanted um, uh, as far as uh, as far as warm, atmospheric, and kind of cozy vibe that it kind of gives off as well. So our main intro, we play that over videos with certain music playing because we took inspiration from uh, Marvel, where they you know where they had their Marvel logo come in, and it's like the music relating to the film. something like that so every logo we have it starts off a nice transition from the intro to the first scene so it doesn't break the immersion of the video that you're watching so we pay for the Adobe software the entire uh, creative uh, creative cloud as it's called um, we pay 16 pound a month because we're on we're on students uh, we're on the student account yours is about to run out mine's still going just you know luckily enough um, so we paid 16 pound a month for the first year um, I've come off that now, and I'm doing £22 a month. You'll you'll be coming off that soon as well. Good luck, have fun. £22 a, a month for the entire software. You get After Effects, Premiere Pro. But I'll talk about my Adobe experience, and you can talk about yours. Um, I use a MacBook Pro for all the editing for the vlogs, uh, for the uh, for the for the easy for the easy on on the go edits and stuff like this. I'll be editing on my laptop because I can take my laptop anywhere. I can take it. I can edit here. I can edit at home. I can edit whilst we're playing video games. I can, you know, do a lot of stuff on on the laptop, and I much prefer a laptop to a computer because if I want to go to the kitchen or if I, I want to go get some fresh air, I can go sit, you know, sit by the uh, sit by like an open door rather than being in a room on a computer. So Premiere Pro is what I use mainly to, to basically get rough cuts, uh, and then I hand them over to this uh, VFX wizard, and he does all the touch up all, all, all the VFXs. But I mainly use Premiere Pro. I use Audition uh, to fix some of the audios, and I also use Lightroom to touch up the photos, make them have a little bit. You can you can create your own presets, download your own presets, uh, and that's how our pictures look a lot better than the standard photos we take um, as well. Yeah, so my experience, um, as, as we said, we pay monthly for the for the for the Premiere um, for the Creative Cloud CC. Um, I think it's 2018 as well, so it's the newest one at the moment. I think the new one's on its way out. Um, but essentially, yeah, I, I very much have used a lot of Premiere Pro. I, I much prefer to have two monitors um, when I'm editing. If I could have three, I would have three. 
I, I like having um, different things on, on different monitors and I have quite a sort of a specific work workflow so I have my folders open and what I usually do when I'm doing an edit I'll have the actual preview window in its own full screen on one screen so that I can see exactly what's on the screen whilst I'm editing. It gives me the full, on the other monitor, it gives me the full monitor to use for the timeline so I can see all the different audio. So when you're doing something that's quite um, audio based and intensive and, and quite uh, in depth, you can have, you know, the five, six, seven, eight, nine audio uh, audio lines as well as the two, three, four, five audio uh, video lines so that you have the full timeline for whatever you're going to place in it and you can see what's going in and you can zoom in and you can get the frame by frame editing done with the full preview side on the other side. So that's my experience with um, Premiere Pro with regards to sort of VFX stuff and After Effects. I spend a lot of time in that in that um, application um, working on whether it's a simple effect or a, a quite an intensive effect or something that we've never tried before and we've just given it a go. Um, I, I quite like to play around with, with an effect. So when we, when we do a shoot and uh, we say, right, we need this to happen, 90% of the time I'll actually try and tackle it with my own skill set of knowledge before I look up any other sort of way that other people would do it just so we get something quite unique to ourselves um, and, and what I'll do is I'll actually usually collate my ideas with three or four other people's ideas to make one nice unique effect. So obviously with making the short films that, uh, that we do uh, there is a lot of props involved. We, uh, our good friend George Carr, famous actor George Carr, as you've seen in, in, in all of our amazing films that he's been a part of, he built this for us. We built it within about four hours and um, we, cut, we cut it apart, built it together, painted it, um, and uh, we, we want to get into more of the prop building because uh, first of all it's cheaper and second of all, it's, it's a lot more fun when you build it yourself because you can kind of actually say that you, you kind of did it yourself. We do always forget to kind of budget for props when, when we think of a short film. Um, and because obviously money is, is not growing off trees for us right now, we've really got to be selective over what, what we choose as well. Yeah, absolutely. So by looking at uh, everything that we've spent money on, adding a tally on, uh, on my phone of everything that we've spent and everything that we've spoken about, we've uh, equaled it out to £7,858. Obviously, the good thing about working in a pair is that it gets split. However, there are some stuff that GFA buys, there's some stuff that I buys. When we go to McDonald's, there's stuff that I buy, stuff that GFA buys. So it's, you know, it's a little bit hit and miss. But the good thing about it is that we, we split it so we can get the better items, which doesn't cost anywhere near as an individual person paying for it on their own. Um, obviously, we have earned nowhere near £7,858. Um, but, you know, you put... You, you get out what you put in and, and we wanted to make sure that we have the best equipment because we want our footage to look the best even if it's for one person five people a thousand people you know we want our footage and our uh, and our videos to, to look good and that just means you know getting the best equipment possible yeah, absolutely and I think if we ever release you know a video where something doesn't look quite as good as it could or something like that or you know something something could look or appear better it's purely a matter of fact that the equipment we had just wasn't what we needed. We, ne we, we put 110% into everything we film and we always get the best possible shots we can with what we have, with the environment we're in, with the, you know, the actors that we're working with, the location we're working with, we always put 110%. So if anything looks subpar 90% of the time it's because we just don't have the equipment at that time. Um, the dream is to, to, to have like a, a red camera one yeah. day which is about 50 grand, so it's quite out of the way, I think. <laughs> but we're already eight grand in the hole. <laughs> eight grand in the hole and never and no light, no light. <laughs> All right, cheers, guys. Um, if, you have, if you have any, any questions about anything, uh, leave a comment below um, or DM us on Twitter, Instagram, anything like that. We, we obviously want our own uh, messages, so you'll get a reply from one of us. Um, and as I said, all links in, in the description below, um, and you can see everything that we've purchased, um, if we can find the link for it, of course, as well. Um, cheers guys, see you on the next video. Thank you very much.